what's the best direction to face your high tunnel or greenhouse? Let's cut through the opinions and look at the data. The factors we're going to look at are which direction gives you the maximum solar heat, which direction gives you the maximum amount of sunlight. Once you pick a direction, which way should you rose face to give plants the most light? And then what are the other factors you should consider? Plant growth depends on light. The sunlight models I'll use are based on central South Dakota at a latitude of 44 degrees north. To evaluate the differences between a north to south facing and east to west facing high tunnel, I did a simulation on a 30 by 60 foot high tunnel, placing it both east to west and north to south. Let's start with looking at June 21st, the summer solstice. The sun comes up in the northeast, takes a long high arc across the sky, and sets late in the northwest. That means we have long days and plenty of light from multiple angles. As we move towards winter, things look very different. The sun rises far to the southeast, cuts low and fast across the sky, and sets early in the southwest. Most of that light hits the south-facing surfaces, while the north side of the tunnel stays in the shade, only getting scattered light from the ground or the clouds. From the simulations I just showed, I pulled the data and put together this graph that shows the monthly sunlight each structure gets. The blue bars are for the structure aligned east to west, and the orange line is for the structure aligned north to south. In the summertime, May through August, the north-south tunnels get more light. But that's not always a good thing in the summer, since we're usually trying to keep things cooler. An east to west tunnel is a bit easier to manage in the heat. The east to west orientation is often recommended for extending the growing season. But when, when we look at the winter months, the difference is minimal. In November and January, both orientations perform about the same. In December, when it's typically too cold to grow even in a high tunnel, there's only a slight advantage to the east to west. So the question is, does this advantage really matter? And what have other studies found? To double check my results, I looked at several other studies. Here's one study, a study on a hobby-sized high tunnel for flowers and herbs. It tested two 12 by 16 foot high tunnels, one north to south and one east to west, both with arched roofs. The trials ran in 2012 and 2016 in Laramie, Wyoming, just a little bit south of here, but still in a similar climate. They grew sunflowers, oregano, and garlic. They had manual roll up sides that they would roll up and down at 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Here's a picture from their paper of what their layout looked like from inside the structure. They found that with the roll-up sides, there wasn't a temperature difference because they had plenty of airflow in both directions. In summary, a quote from the paper, our data suggests that in small tunnels with these dimensions in this location, orientation was not a primary production consideration. That's interesting. All other studies that I found came to the same conclusion. Now we're going to look at what happens inside the high tunnel. We want to maximize the light plants are getting and ensure it is uniform. Here we have just the frame of the structure. We can see the shadow path across the ground on the north to south structure. We can see how the shadow cast by the trusses takes a straight line path during the day. On the east-west structure, the shadow has a very different path. The east-west aligned structure gives you more uniform lighting. Here we have the shadow path on the winter solstice. The small diameter of the strong steel frame of the high tunnel is one of the structure's great advantages over a wooden structure that requires thicker lumber that will cast even larger shadows onto the growing bed. 
Pulse colored image shows the north to south tunnel with the cumulative effect of the shadow pattern in June. Outside of our structure, we have 197 kilowatt hours per meter squared energy falling onto the ground surface. That's what our plants would be getting if they were outside. If our plants are in the area below one of the truss structures, we'll see 11% reduction in that light energy. And if our plants are in the rows or the areas between the frames, we'll see just a 5% drop. This doesn't include the effect of the films. I hadn't considered the shadowing effect until I created these visualizations. I'm not sure if others have noticed its impact on plant growth, but it's a noticeable pattern in the data. Now let's look at tall plants in the high tunnel. In an east to west high tunnel, the rows would typically be oriented east to west like this. The gray boxes are simulating the rows of plants. Typically tomatoes would be this tall. They'd be orientated east to west to make it easier for machinery to be used in the structure. In the summertime, this is fine due to the large swooping sun path that illuminates both sides of the rows really well. As we transition into the fall or the winter, the north sides of these rows get progressively less light. This is a concern that I have with the east-west row orientation. Are we going to have issues with our plants getting less light? Typically, if you look at the Chinese solar greenhouse structures intended for winter growing, they'll orientate their rows north to south like this, even in an east-to-west aligned structure. I found this recent study from 2024 analyzing this exact topic. The authors utilized optical ray tracing methods to evaluate many plant and row spacings to see what was best. Here's an illustration of the structure, a Chinese solar greenhouse. They simulated a tall crop, tomatoes. The number of leaves and row spacings are what would typically be used in Shenyang City, 41.7 degrees north, which is only a little bit south of us the equivalent of just north of Omaha, Nebraska. They compared north to south versus east to west row directions and many furrow, row, and plant spacings. Then they looked at four different row patterns. They kept the number of plants per acre constant in all their simulations at 15,800 plants per acre. Jumping to their findings, they determined the best east to west row configuration was the homogeneous row pattern here with 47 inches furrow spacing and 12.6 inches plant spacing. This configuration gave the most plant canopy illumination. That's the best configuration for east to west rows. Then they took that and compared it to the north-south configuration. Here are the results comparing the row orientations of north to south and east to west. The different colors are the different plant and row layout patterns. On the vertical axis, we have the amount of intercepted solar radiation. The higher the data points, the more light the leaves are receiving. You see the lower leaf areas are getting very similar amounts of light between the north to south rows and the east to west rows. But as we look at the leaves higher up on the plant, we're seeing the leaves on the east to west rows are getting more light than on the north to south rows. Even the authors were surprised by this. What is going on? See what was causing the strange behavior in the model. They looked at the hourly intercepted light. The bottom axis is the time of day. Black is the north to south rows and red is the east to west. We can see here in the north to south orientation, there is a drop in the amount of intercepted light right around midday, right when we have the strongest sunlight. Let's look at this time of day closer in my model to see what's going on. As the sun approaches noon, we can see where the shadows are cast. In the north to south rows, the southern plants are receiving all the light, then cast a shadow onto the plants north of them. In the east to west rows, the tops of each plant along the row are receiving some of the direct sunlight. Now this makes sense. In summary, what is better, north to south or east to west? For solar heat energy, it shouldn't be a primary consideration. Both are about the same in the wintertime. The east to west will reduce your heat load slightly in the summertime. 
The east to west alignment does minimize the effect of frame shadows onto the growing area. And for row direction, for particularly tall crops, the east to west row direction provides the most light to your plants year round. Everything points to east west alignment in most situations for northern growers. Some other factors might be more important than the things we just talked about. Slope and drainage is important. Make sure that you orientate it parallel to the natural contours of your ground. In severe rain events, you want to have good drainage and not have flooding in your tunnel, which can destroy an entire crop. You want to think about infrastructure that you have available, the proximity to irrigation water, electricity, and roads. You also want to make sure that you can get your snow removal equipment around the structure in the wintertime so drifts don't pile up and crush the frame. Prevailing winds, try to align the tunnel perpendicular to strong winds so that it doesn't lift up your structure. But you only want to do that if it doesn't drastically reduce your light. You can plant or grow windbreaks to help reduce some of that wind. One of the most important things is access. You want your structure to be easy to get to so that you're not hindered by the difficulty of getting out to your plants to take care of them and to harvest. This video was funded in part by USDA's South Dakota Specialty Crop Block Grant. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up and share it with your friends. I'd also love to know your thoughts. Comment down below and let's chat. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for more content like this.